we've got a fantastic episode for you today. It is a good one. What is it? What is the topic? Tell well, us. Today, we're not going to tell you about why influencers are great. We're going to tell you when you should not run an influencer campaign. And despite what you think we're going to say, the answer is not, never. Well, let's just dive into it. Let's dive Set into it. So, we're, Set the stage, Brad. So there's a lot of fantastic times when you should run an influencer campaign. We've talked a lot about that. Darn near every time. Perceived vulnerability, personalization of the product. Um, when you're able to really find influencers who connect with your brand and have been using it for a long time. Those are all fantastic reasons to do an influencer campaign. But when should you not run an influencer campaign? So I'm just gonna go ahead, start us off with one. Okay. So one of the things that uh, we see is people trying to jump into influencer too early on in the life cycle of the brand. So what I mean by that is if you have not yet optimized your Facebook, if you have not yet optimized your search engine marketing, do not try to get into influencer marketing. Make sure that you first um, after you've established a brand and really understand who you are, have maximized those really strong acquisition channels. Those low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit, like, yeah. Smart money, do that first. Absolutely, so make sure you get those things truly optimized. Don't just have done it for a month and say, yeah, we're seeing good results, so we wanna get in other channels. No, really make sure that you're taking the time to truly optimize across the low hanging fruit. Um, you know, Depending on your brand, it might be different platforms, but pretty much across the board, that's gonna be search engine marketing, that's going to be Facebook. Um, and potentially even Instagram ads. Um, again, we're not talking about Instagram through influencers, but just Instagram advertising, that's something that we're seeing more and more be part of a standard mix. And of course, there's programmatic buying that you can do yeah, yeah. for, and all for that, banner all that, ads. All um, so another one, I have another one. Yes, when influencer is not good. Yeah, is if you are a very geographically specific product, um, that, that's hard because you're not going to get your biggest bang for your buck. Right. Because you're essentially, you're, you're not just paying for the component of that influencer's views in that geographic location. They might, they might be an Atlanta based influencer and that's that they're known for that, but you're the, the price point is going to be set at their right. views as a whole. Right. So, you're going to be spending for a lot of views that you might not be able to actually generate any ROI. It's inefficient on. spend. So, for example, we happen to be based oh, in like Detroit. There is a, um, a regional grocery chain, which is fantastic, Meyer. Um, they're in, oh, geez, six states. Uh, but they would be a bad candidate for influencer marketing because they are only in six states. Particularly true for YouTube because YouTube, it's baked into the content. Obviously, the content goes worldwide. There are some exceptions, and, and there's gonna be exceptions that apply to all this, so we don't wanna get bogged into those details. No, no but that's but, a good point. Let's make that point. Because we are pointing out, we are pointing out cases where it's not optimal, but right. you and I, more than anyone, understand that there is a niche audience for almost anything. And depending on what the price point is and what the opportunity is, you could make an argument that no right. matter what case we are laying out, there are, there are still some benefits to be had from influencer, but as a whole, we're talking about a general performance metric that, that isn't necessarily gonna work. You're not gonna see it depending on these Let me put a little bow later. on that. So what we're talking about is when it's not effective to run influencer campaigns at scale. So there are going to be niche channels that will do very well in particular geographies. That is absolutely the exception and, and not the norm. So, okay, good. I think you get good. it. Make sure you've optimized your traditional marketing channels before you go into influencer and be aware that most influencer channels do not allow you to geo-target. So those are, those are two things. Um, another thing that it, when it makes it very difficult to run an effective influencer marketing campaign is when you have a product that the influencer is gonna have a really hard time being excited about and being comfortable speaking about. So an example of that might be Gold Bond medicated powder. I might love Gold Bond. I do in fact As an, as an influencer, uh, but I might not be comfortable talking about my own personal challenges with sweat in the general area 
where I'm applying the powder. And even if I love the product, if I'm uncomfortable talking about it, ooh, that is going to be picked up on by the audience. Because as humans, we communicate through, I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 90 different channels um, or mechanisms, and only a handful of them are verbal. So if someone's uncomfortable, audiences are smart, they're going to pick up on it. So even if the product is fantastic, if it makes the influencer a little bit uncomfortable, yeah. it's not going to be particularly effective because the audience is going to suss that out. Slight, slight tweak. I mean, I just, I just want to hit a point home. Yeah, hit it. Anytime you have an influencer who's not really enthusiastic at all about the product, right? It's not. Don't do it. Don't You're do pushing it. a bad position. Agreed. Um, but let's think. Are there are there any other like general? Look, I, I there there are a lot of there are a lot of cases mm -hmm. or like use scenarios under that umbrella that you just laid out where there are where if if they can't genuinely endorse it if they can't if they're going to be embarrassed about it if it's if it's a very low price point little trinket right you know how are you going to get excited about the the, the sticky slap hands you well know? And there's there's two sides to that so there's a side of getting t being tough to get excited about it unless you're a four-year-old um but the, the other element of it is it's a one-time purchase, so you're probably gonna be paying more as a brand to acquire that customer, and if it's not recurring revenue, and you're really not creating a brand for more of a commoditized product, no point. It's, it's not gonna be an effective use of spend. So I guess maybe building off of that, in general, if you have a low cost, a one-time buy product, it's not a good use case in general for influencer marketing. Good call. Are there any others? Are there any others that you can think of, just as a general rule? Probably right. steer clear. There's this one's contra. I can see both sides of this one. This one's maybe a touchy. Yeah. Real, uh, really high end, really high price point items where, you know, is Bentley or um, Learjet mm -hmm. going to put a lot of money in an influencer campaign? What is the ROI on that? You're not, you can help, you can help solidify your brand as this, this aspirational, yeah, aspirational yeah. thing, but sure. But you're not, there are, there are a lot of, I think, better markets to do that, that sure. single play. Well, when I think of like the bell curve of products in terms of one side of the access being very low cost and the other side being very high cost, like the yacht. I think of the, the extremes being really tough for influencer marketing. So whether it's low cost or really high cost items, it's going to be tough to run an effective influencer campaign at scale. So for instance, yeah. for, for a yacht, you're going to be able to find some high end channels on YouTube where people are probably going to be interested in, you know, how to clean boats or uh, how, how to do specific things that even yachts really high sales, like Wiley. I don't know if you know Wiley. He does a channel. He's created a successful yacht channel of brokerage, like yacht brokerage. Yeah. He gives tours of the yachts that he's selling. Which would be fantastic, right? But, but that's a niche. That's the yeah. exception. As a general rule, if you get particularly high end, it's not going to be a strong right. fit. And certainly if you're more of a commoditized product. So if you're a grocery store and you're selling you know, white labeled water, like that is not a good product to be using influencer marketing. Now, yeah, if, it was get, Fi, if it was Fiji water, about that. Fiji water is something that's a little bit more personal. You're carrying it around. It enhances your brand. It's sort of like carrying around a Starbucks coffee cup when you've got that little star and is it a mermaid? It's a mermaid. Yeah. People, people somehow have a brand affinity towards that. It's personal, but Fiji would be the same. But if you're trying to sell something that's commoditized, whether it's water or maybe it's just a brown belt and you're trying to win that sale based upon price, influencer marketing, Good point. not your jam, not your jam. So look, we're honest. We're going to tell you both sides of it. If influencer isn't right for you, we would tell you, but, there are a lot of cases where it is, but I don't need to hit that point <laughs> home too much. I think, I think we can wrap this one up. I agree. Thanks for tuning in today. Goodbye from Detroit.